AP 120, Chapter 19, Topics, Vulva and Breasts. So, the female's external organs for her reproductive system is referred to as the vulva. The vulva includes the outer labia majora, the outer skin fold that enclose and protect the other external reproductive organs. The labia majora corresponds roughly to the male scrotum, and the labia majora meets at the anterior end adjacent to a uh, area called the mons pubis. This area, uh, somewhat in front of the um, pubic symphysis, is a raised area because of additional adipose tissue, fatty tissue in this location. Other structures in the vulva include the labia minora, the clitoris, and the vestibular glands. So the labia minora, they are thinner, more flattened folds of skin. They are hairless and usually somewhat pinkish because of the blood vessels running through them. And the uh, labia minora end up folding, forming a fold over the clitoris. And the clitoris is a mass of erectile tissue at the anterior end of the vulva. And tissue-wise from the embryo, it corresponds roughly to the penis. Also, we can see here the vaginal orifice and the external urethral orifice. Again, um, when we were all embryos, for a period of time, we had the very similar reproductive tissues. But then, approximately five to six weeks in, either the embryo develops toward the female structures because there was no testosterone um, exposure, or the embryo develops toward the male reproductive structures because testosterone was present. But the tissues originally were all the same. All right, the vestibule. The vestibule is the space between the labia minora that again houses the uh, vaginal opening, the external urethral orifice, and also openings for a pair of vestibular glands that lie on either side of the vaginal opening. And the vestibular glands produce mucus that helps to provide lubrication when needed. Uh, so the clitoris and some tissue deeper around underneath the skin that surrounds the opening to the uh, vag vagina uh, have uh, erectile tissues, are erectile tissues that will become engorged with blood again, just like in the male, through the neurotransmitter nitric oxide, causing blood vessels to dilate and those tissues to become engorged. Uh, also, during um, sexual stimulation and arousal, the vestibular glands will secrete mucus. And then, of course, during the orgasm itself, uh, the muscles of the peritoneum, as well as the uterine wall and the uterine tubes, will contract rhythmically. Um, this is thought to help uh, bring the sperm into the uterus and help the sperm make it to the uterine tubes. Uh, the breasts are where you will find the mammary glands. Mammary glands are accessory organs that are important because they produce, surprise, surprise, they produce nourishing milk for the infant. So, at, oops, after the infant is born, the breast mammary glands will produce and secrete milk to nourish the infant. Uh, the mammary glands are connected to the nipple, which is a raised structure uh, that the infant would suckle on. And then there's a darkened pigmented skin that surrounds the nipple called the areola. Uh, the mammary glands are broken down into smaller alveolar glands, which are basically small lobes collectively making up the mammary gland. And every alveolar gland is connected via a lactiferous duct to the nipple. They're also found within the breast, uh, dense connective tissue to give it structure and adipose tissue. Uh, breast cancer is the second leading cause of death from cancer in women. Um, usually occurs in older women after the age of 30. Um, when a woman gets to a certain age, she's recommended to get regular uh, mammograms. Mammography is a type of radiography, so the use of x-rays 
to look for dense tissue within the breast structure. Um, should uh, a dense area of tissue be discovered, then they'll usually do further tests, such as a um, biopsy to make sure that this is indeed uh, breast cancer. And then there are a variety of treatments a woman can undergo, including um, chemotherapy, radiation therapy, lumpectomy, and then the most extreme treatment, a radical mastectomy, where the affected breast is removed along with underlying pectoral muscle tissue and axillary lymph nodes. And that is it for this part of the lecture.